time for another quick garden update. I've used all of the finished compost from our compost bins up front here, except for that one down there on the end, and I've already dug into it a little. These bins are already well started with fresh material that will be composting down this year. My leaf bin is almost completely depleted already. I have been using wood chips from our chipped and shredded pile along with those leaves. I will need to add to that bark mulch pile, so sticks are being staged here. The supply of fallen branches out here is nearly endless. And another source of carbon that I use out here is shredded paper. This is kind of interesting. As I've been coming across pine cones in our finished compost, I've been tossing them into a pile here. That's a lot of pine cones that would have ended up in our raised beds. This is pretty cool. Peas that I just recently planted have started to grow. Life is pretty good out here. Good for goats too. Look at these lazy goats. The last raised bed to be topped off is this one here in the front corner, and I'll be able to finish it today. These beds in the middle are not being topped off. They're just a little too full of Wendy's plants from last year that are still growing, and we didn't want to smother them. I avoided burying these onions and some of the other plants by just keeping the finished compost in areas away from them. Last year we had dill growing in this bed. A lot of it went to seed and to me they just look like little scrubby weeds. I did end up smothering them with the finished compost. Wendy wasn't too happy about it. Sorry Wendy. As you can see, we have planted more things out here. Plenty of marigolds. Some broccoli starts. Cauliflower starts. Wendy has also planted lettuce, cabbage, and squash out here. She also planted more flowers in these hanging baskets and these end beds. We will have extra compost this year, so I've added some under our rose bushes. 
Before I did that, I used a leaf blower to remove dead leaves that were littering the ground underneath them. This is important to keep black spot under control. I just don't do as good a job of it as I should. The beds in the greenhouse here are all topped off with finished compost. And Wendy has planted a few pepper starts and plenty of pepper seeds. I topped off this brick planter in front of our house. These larger flowers are perennial, so hopefully they'll grow and spread for years to come. The smaller flowers are annuals to just help fill in the space some this year. More compost went in the barrel planter before Wendy planted a mint patch. And she has plans to use our green stock planter for herbs. The rhododendrons are blooming out here. And our books are enjoying a nice, lazy, warm spring day too. You might remember me building these compost bins right next to our chicken coop last year. This side has pretty fresh material and it's not going to be ready to use this year. This bin has had time to compost and it's ready to go. If you're familiar with composting, you'll know it's not uncommon to have things growing in your compost bins. In this case, we've got some volunteer potatoes. There is room in some of our bucket planters for more potatoes. So I'm going to try and carefully transplant those volunteers. Those potatoes are a little bit taller than you want them to be when you try and transplant them. So it may not work, but I haven't got anything to lose. You might be wondering why I haven't topped off these buckets with finished compost. With potatoes, it's best to gradually add the soil as the plant gets bigger. It just helps encourage more potatoes to grow. <laughs> <laughs> 